Hi dear crafty friends, today I'm taking part in an art journaling YouTube hop with some friends around the world with amazing prizes that you can all win. We will all be creating art journaling pages and you need to hop from channel to channel according to the list that is provided in the description and at the end of the video. Leave a comment and subscribe to each channel and then you'll have a chance to win these amazing prizes by our sponsors. Uh, the winner will be announced on June 6th. So let's get started. So today I want to use some jelly printed tissue papers. These are the tissue papers that I get at my local craft store. I cut them into pieces and then I simply use my jelly plate. If you don't have a jelly plate then you can use uh, tissue papers, pattern papers, stencils, stamps or something else to create a colorful background. But because instead of using a thick watercolor paper or cardstock, I'm using tissue paper to print my jelly plate on. And using tissue paper is really special and really fun because it has a really cool effect when you attach them to whatever surface you're working on with gel medium. Because you get that, the tissue paper becomes transparent. So whatever pattern you're using on the tissue paper, it looks like it's part of the page. So it's really, really cool. And I'm going to create now a background from all the pieces of uh, tissue paper that I have. So you simply need to take your jelly plate and make some prints on tissue paper. It's actually the same paper that you find in shoe boxes when you buy new shoes. It's the same one, you can get it at your craft store. So basically what I'm doing, I'm taking pieces of my tissue paper and using gel medium to attach them to my art journal. And I'm using art journal um, gel medium on the bottom, attaching the piece of tissue paper and then adding another layer of gel medium on top of the tissue paper. And now I'm going to use a piece with a little bit more white on it and you're going to see what happens to the tissue paper when you apply the gel medium on top it simply gets immersed or looks like a part of the page itself it's really really cool and I really love this technique it's great on canvases and art journal on scrapbook paper whatever surface you want to work on. Because it's so thin, um, then the gel medium simply makes it look, again, like it's part of the background. And that is really, really cool. Look at this piece now with the circles. It almost looks like i taking a stamp and stamped the page, right? Only this is tissue paper. The other fun part about using tissue paper is that because it has this this transparent look is that you can do layers and you put one layer on top of the other and then you can still see the bottom layer and the top layer because of this effect of transparency that is enhanced with the gel medium so I'm basically filling my entire art journal page with different pieces of the tissue paper and I'm using yellows and oranges and reds and pinks keeping the color palette sort of compatible uh, but of course it depends on what color you created and what pattern you created uh, if you don't want to tear the paper, you can also cut them with scissors and choose whatever part of the pattern you want to use in your background. It's really fun. I am just wetting my brush a little bit because this gel medium is very thick. Sometimes it needs a little bit of help. So I'm building my background 
and you have to make sure that the pieces are fully covered with the gel medium and that they are well attached to the page. So I'm tearing around this background pattern here, this number, and now I'm going to overlap it slightly with the circle pattern and you're going to see what I was talking about, the layering. So once I've covered the tissue paper with the gel medium on the left side specifically, you can see that I can still see the circles, but I can also see the numbers. And that is really, really cool. Uh, you can build layers like that on a canvas or your art journal page, or if you want to alter a wooden box, instead of painting it, you can cover it with um, tissue paper uh, that you created yourself with your jelly plate. So you can understand yourself the potential of this technique and plus it's really fun. See, even these yellow um, squares do not cover the circle completely. So you can see the layering effect that I'm creating here. So I'm really enjoying myself creating this background. Um, and I like the colors too. And I have a pile of these tissue papers that I've created. You can just take an hour and play with your jelly plate. And while you're using your tissue paper, just when you lift them off your jelly plate, be careful. It's, they're very gentle. You don't want to tear them. So you need to work slowly. But uh, I also prefer working in small uh, squares and not doing very large squares of tissue paper. That gives me more control and makes sure that it doesn't tear. But you can work in a larger scale as well if you have a larger jelly plate or just use part of it. But anyway, I really encourage you to try this technique of creating jelly plate printed tissue papers because it's really really fun. So you can see our background is coming together. Um, want that circle so I am cutting it with scissors. It's gonna go there like this. And this will be I think the final piece of the first layer of the background and look at that isn't that cool I really like it so I'm going to now add a few black patterns on top of the colorful yellows and pinks and oranges and reds and now you're going to see the full effect of the layering that I was talking about before maybe I'll add another piece and again, when you're working on your jelly plate, you use stamps and stencils and everything that we learned in the series about jelly plate printing and how to do that. So you can go back and check that out and refresh your memory about that. So that's the background. It is, I think it's ready. You have to make sure to dry it very thoroughly before moving to your next part. I have taken a black pen and I am just doodling some shapes on my background. Really funny, quirky shapes. Um, you can use stamps for this part if you are not feeling comfortable with drawing. But I like the, this part. Um, and I'm going to go back with some gesso, very diluted gesso. I'm diluting it a little bit with water because I want to mute the pattern around the shapes a little bit, but I don't want it to be covered. So what I'm creating is a very thin layer of white gesso that is muting the pattern, but you can still see it through the whiteness of the gesso this will make my shapes pop out a little bit more but still I'll be able to see all the beautiful patterns of the tissue paper that I've added 
to the background. So once I'm done with that again, make sure it's dry completely and then I'll be able to go in with my pen and start having fun with some doodling and shapes and maybe even a little bit of text and I like the lines not to be too uniform that's why I'm going over it with the pen a few times I wanted to have a feel of like scribbling on a page so I'm going over the lines loosely with the pen and then I'm going to add some details inside the shapes some circles and dots and lines if you have seen me do this before and I still get responses from people who are really don't feel comfortable with doodling but again when it comes to doodling there are no rules so just take your pen and try I forgot to put some gesso here so I'm just doing it now just try doodling is really fun see all the shapes that I've added I follow the patterns of the tissue paper for some of my shapes like the leaves and the circles um, that can also give you an idea and I'm going over the squares in the on the papers and the lines that are there around the numbers can you just use whatever you have on your patterns in the tissue paper that you've added as a basis for your doodling and for adding details around the numbers here as well and it's really fun I really like it when you just freehand and add details it's fun this way and now I'm going to add a few more details over there adding a little bit more gesso to some of the parts this will create more shadowing and more interesting background some will be visible some will not be vi be so visible so it makes it a little bit more interesting and not so uniform and finally what I want to do is um, add some text sometimes I know what I'm going to say on my page in advance and sometimes I don't and I'm just adding it while I work um, this page really makes me think about imagination because it's kind of a weird page with lots of colors and funny shapes and just goes to show you what imagination can do so what I'm going to add are just little sayings about imagination like imagination is the best thing there is it can take you wherever you want to go or imagine is Imagine a world uh, where anything is possible, or my imagination is a great place. Uh, imagination is the best thing. Things like that uh, that I want to say that add a little bit more detail to the page. So basically, this is the page for this time. I really, really liked how it turned out. I think it's fun. The background is unique. We learned a really great technique. We have beautiful colors uh, and shapes and a message. And I hope you liked it too. Thanks for joining us in this blog hop. And thanks for watching. Make sure to keep on hopping between all the channels and get all that amazing inspiration. Because you have a chance to win amazing prizes by our sponsors. Um, the way to discover if you won or not is to subscribe to the channel or the newsletter and then find out on June 1st if you're the winner or not. So have fun hopping.